I just got back from a walk outside. Um, and now it's time to eat some dinner. So uh, actually, today was a cardio day for me, and since um, <clears throat> the weather is pretty nice today, I figured I'd just go for a walk. Um, so yeah, that's the nice thing about the summer, you know? You can do your cardio at home, or you can do it um, like outside, I guess, in this case, or you can do it at the gym. Um, I do have a stationary bike at home as well in the basement, so if I wanted to do cardio at home specifically, I could. But with a nice day like this, like you might as well take advantage of um, the nice weather. With that said, not every day in the summer am I gonna wanna go for a walk outside. I'm probably gonna do some days uh, cardio at the gym. Um, so with that said, I was thinking about doing a run, but with my sciatic nerve area still kinda being fixed, I decided not to run. Um, so just went for a walk, enjoyed the sun. And that was my cardio, because really all it's gonna do is just walk on the treadmill at the gym anyways. So, might as well get some of that vitamin D and just enjoy the what nature has to offer, I guess. Um, so yeah, that was nice. Um, yeah, hopefully my sciatic starts to feel better and then I can make this like a run because I'd, I'd like to do a little bit higher um, intensity cardio some days. Not every day that I do cardio do I want to do higher intensity, but some days I'm gonna want to push it a little bit more. So um, yeah, once that feels better, I can make these days into a run outside to enjoy the nice hot weather doing that. Um, so yeah, I was basically just gonna do a treadmill walk. I just did it outside. Um, I was also thinking of doing a little bit of abs, but I'm kind of, leaning towards just training abs once a week because I find if you do like one good intense ab workout for the week that that's like pretty much enough because your abs aren't a muscle too and if you're training your abs to failure and especially with like weights they do need time to recover guys so keep that in mind um so yeah ground beef in this bowl potatoes in this bowl just I'm sure you guys saw that um So that's on. So yeah, like I was saying, so I mean your abs are a muscle too, so you gotta you gotta let those recover. So I didn't mind not training abs today. Today is Tuesday. Because then the next cardio day, because I do push pull legs, but I do one day off in between. My next opportunity to do abs on my next cardio day would be Thursday. So I can always hit it hard Thursday. And then I would rest until next week, of course. Um, or I could do it Saturday or Sunday if I really wanted to. Um, what I was thinking about doing potentially is doing one more intense ab day where I do more exercises, more to failure, and that would be like on the Tuesday. And then I do a second ab day potentially on like Saturday. Because then I have time to rest, but then it would be way less intensity, way less exercises, maybe not so much to failure. But the only issue with that is, yeah, I'd pro probably quickly recover from that. But the only issue is that I would only have technically Sunday and Monday to recover, and then I'd be back into like a full ab workout. And then the question is, would I be fully recovered to then make progress in that next ab workout, especially with like weighted exercises? And even like just progressively over overloading in terms of like adding reps to some of the body weight movements that I'm doing. Um, like I'm not too sure if I would. Um, so it kind of comes down to the theme of my last video and just, I guess, a, ongoing theme is just recovery um, so if you can't recover in between your workouts you can't progress you're not gonna make the results that you want to make eventually it's gonna catch up to you and you're gonna get injured and then you're gonna have to backtrack anyways so you might as well pace yourself and just not do too much to start make consistent gains be consistent and not get injured so that's kind of where I'm sitting out with that so I think I kind of answered my own thoughts my own questions there and I think I'm just gonna train abs just like once a week just like every other muscle that I'm doing Um, I could train abs on like Friday with my legs, but then there's just so much going on in that workout. And like, even if it's just a light touch up ab session, um, you're so tired after legs. So it's almost like, I don't know. 
So I'm thinking just once a week is, is plenty for me. Just treat it just like any other muscle group and just train it once a week so you have optimal time for recovery. Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I didn't mind missing the ab workout today. With that said, I could have gone down to the basement and trained abs. I do have a pull-up bar so I could do, because I like to do leg raises. <clears throat> I could have still done those. Um, but what I think I'm gonna do when I train abs at home, because some of the times I will just train abs at home, is I used to do MMA guys for like a year. I'm not like a fighter or anything like that. Um, but I used to do the circuit and it was 30 seconds per exercise without resting if you can. Of course, if you need to stop, you can stop for five minutes straight. So every 30 seconds you switch exercises. So you'd be doing like leg, leg raises, crunches, side crunches on one side, side crunches on the other side. And then when you get to the fourth minute, for the last minute you do a plank. And if you can work up to doing exercises, like varying exercises, 30 seconds straight for that five minutes, guys, uh, with the plank at the end, I'm telling you, your abs are gonna be pretty strong if you can be able to do something like that. And then you can rest for a couple minutes and you could do it again. And trust me, if you were to be able to do that twice with not a ton of rest in between and not resting for those five minutes, then your abs are pretty strong. Um, and of course it would take time to get to that stage. Um, so that's, that's progressive overload in itself too. It doesn't just have to be um, adding weights. So I could do that a couple of days that I don't go to the gym and I just end up staying at home and I want to train cardio and abs. Uh, so that's an option too. Um, I added some mustard. Here's some sweet and spicy mustard. Sometimes I also add bold and spicy mustard um, just for some extra flavor. Um, you guys are probably thinking, wow, this guy eats literally the same meals all the time. But honestly, like if you just do it, you honestly kind of get used to it. Um, so I was going to make eggs because I had ground beef a bunch today already for two other meals. Um, or one other meal. Or no, yeah, two other meals. Uh, my two lunches at work. Um, but honestly, I had all that food prep freshly um, yesterday. So I got a ton of meal prep. I don't have to worry about running out of food right now. And like divvying up my food per se so um, I don't mind eating ground beef guys it tastes super good it's actually one of my favorite things to eat I just spit everywhere there um, so yeah I have no problems making this another meal if this was you and you needed more variety then feel free to change up you know your sources but I'm okay with eating this again um, so I'm gonna do it and it's much easier just to scrape it into a bowl heat it up in the microwave and just eat it and that's kind of the benefit of meal prepping you just gotta spend like an hour and a half, maybe max two hours, depending on what you're making. And you prep for like a few days. And that time that you spend doing that saves you so much time so that you don't have to cook during the week, obviously. And you can just pop your food into a bowl, microwave it for a couple minutes, and then bam, you can just eat it right away. So if you get lazy, which all of us do, like it's a quick fix to be able to eat your food super quick because it's already prepped, right? So sacrifice a little bit of time for like a long-term um, like benefit, you're benefiting by having a ton of meals prep in that same time that it would have taken you to make all that other food, but you made it in bigger portions so you could have more meals of it. Um, and obviously that saves you a ton of time when you're actually getting going during the week and having meals. Um, like this is so easy to make guys. It took me, you know, if I wasn't filming, it heats up in the microwave for two seconds. How long does it take to scrape into the bowl? Like a couple minutes, right? Um, so that one prep, like I meal prep twice a week, but that one prep that you do for a couple of hours ends up saving you to be able to prep so many meals throughout the week for many days within a matter of like five minutes. Um, so it's definitely worth it. Um, with that said, I'm gonna take a couple bites here. Delicious as usual. I'm gonna chug a bunch of water because after that walk in this heat, feels like 30 degrees Celsius. Um, super hot. Don't want to be dehydrated, so got to load back up on the water. And then maybe have a Diet Coke or something like that, or some sort of like flavored water, depending on how hungry I am, if I want to um, fill myself up a little bit. And the other thing is I didn't eat my almond butter from breakfast yet. 
So I'm probably gonna have some almond butter, just like 15 grams, which ends up being like roughly a tablespoon. Um, so I'll have that after this meal, and that's gonna be it for the night. Um, and that's the meals for today. Um, so yeah, staying on the grind. See you guys in the next video. Peace.